Hello and welcome back to MD Model Works. I'm Mark Davey. Um, we're ready to do some priming. We've uh, <coughs> I finished off building the cockpit, just the side walls. There wasn't that much to show, so I thought I'll just build them up, then we'll come straight in the prime. Now I'm gonna prime a couple of bits, show you what I'm doing, and then we'll go off camera and I'll come back. Um, I'll explain some bits that I found out with the Revel instructions a little while ago and I'll, br I'll tell you all about that when we come to do the internal colouring. So we're going on with 309 black primer and microfiller. The reason that I use black primer is simple really. It just helps with the weathering to begin with. What this does, it gives you a little bit of extra uh, shadows and colorings and what have you all the way through the system so what we're going to do we're just going to lay a little bit in we've got the airbrush set a little bit higher than I normally would about 18 to 20 psi and I'm trying to get too much down at once hence I'm having problems this is a 0.3 needle in here and it will lay down nicely and I just I tend to be a little bit nervous when I'm trying I don't know why but anyway we're getting to it it's coming in top of the walls and my hand didn't really want to do on the side so to do that so that's basically it we'll come in now fuselage a lot of people just only paint the areas that's going to be seen I'm um, a little bit old school and I like to spray the whole of the area. The whole of the internal of the fuselage. So that's what we're gonna do. But always wear a mask, although I'm not doing now so simply because I'm talking to you guys. I have ordered an external mic for the camera, so that should make things a little bit clearer and better and you won't hear the noise from the servo, which I've just switched off, apologies. So we'll just do these walls quickly. If you wonder why I'm just going to the blot and paper now and again with a higher pressure. The primer dries on the tip a little bit quicker, and all that does is just blow off the tip. You get no nasties in your paint. And also to clear anything. Flop on the flow of the airbrush. Now, there's an old argument that's gone on Facebook for multiple years where it says, Do I need to prime? Really? Um, in this day and age, with the lack of uh, mold releasing on the kits, not really. Um, not with enamels. Personally, I like it. It gives me an idea what's underneath the plastic that you might have missed. So it's worth having a look and using primer with a 
acrylics which I've well I don't put through my airbrush because they tend to ruin airbrushes I <laughs> that'll cause a drama um, I find you would need with acrylics you 100% need primer or you will have massive issues with your paint lifting or scratching enamels or lack of based enamels like us, the Arclad one, you don't need to prime, but it's, I just like to do it for belt and braces if you like. My poor old compressor. getting old now she's done about eight years on this compressor so I'll just give her that I'll do this piece then I'll prime the rest and we'll come back and add some color I'll explain what I meant about the um, Ravel colour call out. Because considering it's Ravel Germany now, I'm surprised at that. Uh -huh. When you're priming, make sure you get everywhere. If you've missed something when you clean your car up, it will show. And also, you don't have to make it uniform. Some of it can be thinner, some are darker. That's what create, helps to create the shadows. Well, I thought Cliff Richard created the shadows, but there you go. making sure you get all the parts that you think might go through in the main paintwork and there we go that's one primed up cockpit part okay so I'll get on and I'll prime up all the other parts and we'll come back and we'll add some right welcome back so I'm just going to do a little test turn it down too high the airbrush we're just putting the, the grey on now this is what I was talking about earlier Ravel on their call outs call for this to be light green or light olive um, was a bit concerned so I did some checking as everybody should when a using the colour call light from someone else and lo and behold I was right it should in reality be RLM 02 grout not light olive now RLM 02 hang on let me move this light about here a bit um, Is a greyish greenish colour and it was used on a high percentage of World War II German aircraft especially cockpit area so I was right to question Ravel 
Uh, as you can hope, well, you photographs later will do a bit more justice, but you'll be able to see we're getting a few shadows through from the black primer. We're running about 10 psi, between 8 and 10 is my usual flavour. And I'm just laying a very light coat down. And then we'll pick out all the detail work with a brush, of which I can't use Alclad. Hopefully soon we will have a brush ready paint available. Alright, so we just light coats. Remember the lighter the coat, the better it's likely to look. And the better Finish you're gonna get. I mean, I, I, I'm not a blaster. I never have been. Um, as I've said before, if it wasn't for an airbrush, I wouldn't make the models because I can't hand paint anything in my life. For the life of me, rather. I never have been able to. Which is quite a shame because I do enjoy painting. Oops, I just pulled the chair up. My fault. So, I'm just getting, I'll just take that off for a moment. It was only loosely glued. And we're given everything just a light coat. Okay, so that allows. Just a little bit of weather and look, if you like. Let's put that to one side. I'll just do a side panel. And you can see what I'm up to. I'm using the Badger 105 Patriot. Um, one of my go-to brushes. I would have used Miyawata HPCS, I think it is, HPCR3, but it does need a thorough clean, a strip clean, and I wanted to try and get these parts painted today, this afternoon, and when I've done that, that's what I will be doing. I've got a poorly puppy downstairs in Dudley with his leg. So there's no walkies tonight for me or him. Well, walking anywhere at the moment is painful for us both. Okay, so. And already with that black under there, it gives you heavily emphasized by the camera I'm looking at the screen but you'll notice there are shadows and it gives it that worn look before you even start although to the eye it looks like it's been quite well painted and quite well done right so I'm gonna go along I'm gonna airbrush everything that I need to then I'll come back and we'll do some more Right, so we're back. Now, off camera, I've given the guns a coat of um, gunmetal. Alclad, I oh, can't remember the name now. Oh, sorry, Alt 120. Also, the ammo boxes. So, we'll be alright with those. Now, we're coming in a little bit of detail painting. Um, We've got four colours. As I said before, we don't actually make uh, brushables at the moment. Hopefully they're going to come along um, shortly. 
I said uh, Rob's daughter has come up with an idea and I think it's a good one when I saw the idea so hopefully not too distant future we'll have brushables and then I will be completely 100% alclad paint wise anyway uh, I'll cut the colour sheet out I don't trust this colour sheet so I've also got on my computer to my left photographs of the original aircraft which is telling me some of the descriptions that they come up with is completely wrong so Ravel has come up with a wrong so I'm gonna use the photographs as reference as well as what I'm doing here so I'm just checking all this and I'm gonna use just some acrylic to paint um, I don't use Tamiya X series to paint oh, probably wiggling the camera sorry I use multiple brands um, a gentleman from or at Telford gave me a set of basic colors which is all I need blacks reds and whatever uh, like I said I'll use these until we can get our range sorted so put these to one side and then it's just the face plate of the switch gear I'm just, and I'm just going to paint on the surface that's all for starters and get the coat onto that I'm not a, a lover of acrylics uh, when I first started I always I had the full set of Vallejo um, I started off with Tamiya XF series to begin with difficulty with those painting them, hand brushing them probably no fault of the paint just me but when you lose confidence in something it's very difficult to get it back so like I said I was given these by Mr Alan Kelly at Telford I think it was 2018 it wasn't last year because I don't believe I came home I didn't come home with a paintbrush this year last year 2019 we were so busy just didn't have time to get off the, the stand to have a look round mind you in five years I haven't had a look round certain stalls that we deal with for decal sheets and what have you and I'm, I tend to find I'm quite a loyal person so I will use the same person constantly over and over again but that's the way things are with me I'm afraid love it or hate it so just having a look round now this handle here is black and so we're just going to detail it up A lot of this stuff you won't even see. Mind you, this has got quite a wide open cockpit. So a lot of it you will, I suppose. Which, you know, is a good thing. Um, this is also going to be going to, well, the idea is it for it to go to uh, Fixed Aviation Museum, NASM. Norfolk and Suffolk Aviation Museum I should say I call it Flixton I grew up with it that's what it is to me I've, Mick and I are building B24 Liberators 
in 1 32nd. I couldn't do that as a video build simply because it's just going to take so long to do. So I'm building this as well in the meantime. Um, I think Nick's getting on very well with his. Do a lockdown. He's had a lot more time than I have as I haven't stopped working since day one. The company that I work for actually does uh, oil for farmers and paint. So that's where I've been. I don't have, as I said before, I don't have the time that I used to have to do my models. But I do enjoy my job. So that's not a complaint. If you ever watch this, Roy. Right, just having a. I said, keep looking forward. I should have printed this off really, so I got it in front of me. But it's on the cat on the the Mac just behind me. Just for the record, I don't use a Mac for any other reason. Is that I was a. Microsoft engineer for 15, 16 years and I personally would never buy another Microsoft product again that's been on there on my desk now that Mac as an iMac I believe it is, see I don't even take a lot of notes nowadays my iMac's been on there now for since 2015. It never gets switched off. It's never let me. It's let me down once. That's my own fault. I wasn't sure what I was doing with it, and I rushed an update, and I lost a little bit of information. Nothing major. I only had it about a month. So that's why I like Macs. Right, so that's, that's the black done. Let's have a quick look at this. J is leather brown, B is black matte. So we have our joystick handle is also black. nice uh, I'm just going to do this part and I'll do all the others separately just so that we try and keep the size of the um, video down a little bit so I need to put that up top otherwise I'm never going to get to see what I'm doing just to keep me out of mischief as they say we have I'm going to put this one on next which is the leather brown I know it's not the actual well it is the cockpit but I, I need to get the seat painted because there'll be decals to go on here later I'd like it to dry so I'm going to put a leather brown down on the seat the seat mat Sorry, that's miles out of camera. I do apologise. This is just a basic brown. And I will put some aqua gloss on top. Allow that to dry. Then I'll be ready for decaling later. With the seat belts as I said I'm going to build this completely out of the box I made a decision 
just so that we can see exactly what we got when we finish the build out of the box obviously there's going to be extras to add Hannah's who is now a, an official sponsor I've got to deal with them for all my not so much kits but extras like seat belts and what have you resin parts when we get into some full builds just like so and along the back edge Well, look, I'll let that dry. That looks quite nice. A little bit missing there. That will dry off nicely. And then we come to there was something else that was brown. Oh yeah. What I'll do I'll just add a little bit of black to this. Just darken it down a bit so that it's not. It's horrible. I say horrible, it's not horrible, but a slightly different colour. And that's the main chassis block of the head up. So I'm hoping this is on camera and my head is in the way. Oh, it's a long way for me in the way, that's good. And we'll just layer this down all the way to the edge Today. It's the bank holiday Monday, 25th of May. I've got a poorly puppy sitting behind me in Dudley. He's at his foot. So I'm kind of keeping an eye on him as well. top let that dry there's another colours to go on there so I'll let that dry off okay let's call it out for brown on the throttle quadrant so just having a look literally just that one then the other ones are different colours altogether okay alright that's nice just clean that brush up quick then we come on to some reds which are on multiple parts as usual again look at the throttle quarter because that's what we finished and our other one there is a red one. So, look 
give that a quick touch on. That's fine. And then ba -ba -ba -ba. got a little handle here, it's just red. That looks good. Don't think there's anything else much red to be honest. It's weird because that's calling out for you, which is a brown for the pipe work. So while we're on camera, I'll just do that and we've got the brown mixed ready. So just Guiding it round. The joiners are metal. End of the pipes. So it's not a biggie. We can soon do that with some metallic paint underneath. And then we've got the pipe work that leads. I'm not sure. I don't know if I could bring you in. A little bit. Uh, can you see the pipe work that goes underneath the brown? Yeah, you can just. And what we're going to do start it from the position and just pull it along. Being gentle. A lot of people say for me, you don't do gentle. Yeah, I do. Hopefully you can see this. And then what we need to do now is just to touch it in along the top, like so. And uh, that's all the brown. Just checking that there's no more red. There is a little bit. I just noticed, sorry, just banged the camera leg. That's that bit there. Like so. Let that dry and then I'll just touch that in. Right, so you get the idea of what I'm doing when I'm detailing. This will be the end of part two. This should be about 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. So then we'll come back and do some more. Okay, thanks for watching. And I'll see you on the flip side.